Welcome back. Happy Tuesday. We are here with John Adranya. That's right. We're going to talk about sim containers, some awesome lizards, and some pretty fun stuff. You guys are going to like this one. Thank you. There's a lot of uh, uh, Balkan, Greek mixed in as well. Balkan? Balkan. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are here today with John Adrania. No. <laughs> My last name again. <laughs> How do you say it? Adragna. What? No, it's Adrania. Adrania. Yes, the proper way to say it is Adrania. All right, guys. Well, John A. We're here with John A. Yeah. Adranya. Spelled yeah. like a dragna, like a dragon, because he is kind of like the lizard king. Yeah, there is a dragon in the name. But Adranya. Yes. So he's doing the sim container thing, which is cool, and kind of how we hooked up. But I mean, I think he's really known for a lot of lizards and stuff like that. So as you guys saw in the little little spiel a second ago. But um, but let's just jump right in. John, how do we know each other? Well, I've seen your name online a lot, but like. When I first met you, it was at the Tinley Show in March. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, met, yeah. I, I just so, bumped into you. I was like, oh, I know you. <laughs> but I've, I've met him a bunch of times before that, but he just doesn't remember because there was no interest in, in me at the time. So it's kind of... But yeah. Okay, so yeah, a few months ago at Tinley, we were kind of hanging out. Actually, I think um, I was there with uh, Kimberly Paws was helping me with my boots. Yes. And you guys were talking. Yes. Yeah, I bumped into you and... Hung out for a while, talking about Kimberly Rock monitors. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, who, some of you guys may not know, but I used to be like really just geek out on uh, dwarf monitors uh, as far as as far as like a commercial breeding thing. I geek out on everything all the time, but I bred a lot of dwarf monitors back in the day. So it was pretty fun. But I had a I had an incubation idea that I wanted to use. I'd seen his product. And a lot of the successes everyone else had, after a few years of thinking about it, I realized just how genius it was. Yeah. This is the magic sauce right here. That's that's the part like I this like. This grid. Yeah. Polycarbonate. This grid. It's nothing gets small. through there. Your babies will not get through unless you're breeding like micro geckos. Which is huge. Yeah. So this thing, the way that it fits down inside the container there actually cuts everything off. Right. They so you don't have to through. worry about them. You can incubate over water, but you don't have to worry about them diving underneath and killing themselves. But but more than that, I mean, uh, so you gave me that one, and I happened to have a clutch immediately after. Yeah. And I've been playing with it for, it's we're about two months into incubation. Some of you guys, if you follow me on YouTube, might have seen the live feed I did with the, with the uh, bioactive incubation method that I'm using inside these. Uh, we, we've put a couple of videos up, too, on the Free Tip Friday. But, man, I love it. I mean, I love it. It is awesome. So, and I'm going to adopt some of his techniques, too. I've been incubating the same way for like 20 years. Nothing changes it. And then dropping, just replacing the old containers I had with sim containers and doing the bioactive thing, that's that's next generation stuff as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to try. I got clutches coming up, yeah. and that's what I plan There's on. There's no downside. There's no, no downside to it. It's awesome. It's great. great. And, you know, if, if you don't want to do the bioactive method in the sim, you can do wet sponges. You can do... Perlite drenched with water, vermiculite, all your, you know, your normal media. Pretty much my whole incubator is a sim container. But, um, but no, I mean, these boxes are, are absolutely fantastic. So Thank you. Yeah. It's amazing how versatile they are, actually. Yeah, so and the dishwasher what's... safe. Dishwasher safe, huh? Yeah. My wife will love that. Yeah. Actually, my wife is the dishwasher. We don't, we don't have, like, one of the newfangled mm -hmm. electric ones. You're lucky. What are they, electric? I do my own dishes. the dishwasher run? It's electricity, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't know. My wife is pretty good. <laughs> We're editing that part out. Anyway, okay, so we, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but what would you consider like your reptile specialty or your, your biggest contribution? Or... Uh, probably water monitors are my favorite monitor and 
the one that I've studied the most. And, and uh, you know, recent DNA studies have shown that a lot of these subspecies are actual elevated species, and so Which they're not Salvatore anymore. Probably anybody keeping them knew that all along, right? <laughs> that yeah. it should have been. Yeah, when you look at the tail and the head shapes of these, say, the Filipino water monitors, you know, the heads are just narrower. The new chalice you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, new chalice, the coming eye, marmoritus, the nostrils are further from the tip of the nose. Um, the neck scales are much bigger. The tail shapes are totally different. But yeah, water monitors are my absolute favorite. It's amazing the stuff, the, just the, the caliber of the animals that you somehow come up with. You know Vincent Fricano? Yes. What's up, Vince? Hi, Vincent. Yeah, Vince. Hope I see you again Yeah. in California next yeah. time I visit. So Vince, Vince, I actually convinced them to hire him at Prehistoric Pets whenever oh, really? I was working there. So we worked together for a long time. Vince was the, the monitor guy. The first and, time I met him, I, I went, I called him. I said, I'm to, in California, I'm coming to visit. And he used to run on that forum. Was that your forum? What was it called? Cyber Salvatore. Cyber Salvatore. He was on there geeking out about it all the time. I was like, yeah. get back to work. He would do it during the work day. Yeah, yeah. That's how long. I, I knew you from way back. He yeah, just yeah, didn't yeah, know yeah. me. He just, he <laughs> no, just I, didn't pay attention. No, I, I, I didn't know you from then. Yeah. Did you? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Different opinion of me back then. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> sure. Such a liar. Such a liar. It comes out so smooth though. It's like native language. Yeah. That's funny. So so like what's your what's your thought on the, the monitor lizard scene right now? I mean we finally oh, have morphs, you got all the new new there's, species status stuff. There's morphs, there's it's they're super popular, more popular now than ever. Unfortunately prices of everything have gone crazy high. Um, but they seem to. Be... But it's worth it when you're talking about captive bred. I mean, yeah. back in the day, they were low, but yes, you you buy twenty of them and one survives. You and know? there's something for everybody in that in that family of monitors. You know, if you're just getting into them, you know, I try to ste steer people away from going for a savanna monitor as a first monitor, and I try to get them to go for an Aki because an Aki, you know, doesn't require the space that a savanna does, and um, you can manage it in your apartment. And they just have worlds more personality. Tons more personality. Yeah. They do everything in front of you. Um, they eat in front of you. They breed in front of you. They, you know, they handle mistakes well. As long as you're feeding them and supporting them, they do the rest. Yeah. And they're not dangerous. Yeah. So. And it's a what's cool too is it uh, with ackies and that kind of stuff. I mean, you get a really quick return on the efforts. I remember having babies hatched out by the time my adults would turn one. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I've had them breeding crank. and laying eggs. Twelve months, by, you get to have the experience of breeding some pretty elite reptiles, really. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, they, they breed very early. And they're they're like a small Komodo dragon with spikes totally. on its tail. Totally. I mean, they act they like act, you've seen the documentaries of Komodo dragons. They all are the all, the, all the big monitor in a tiny package. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What's your What would you say is your most favorite and least favorite thing about the reptile industry? You've been a, a player at all kinds of levels and then different whether importing, captive breeding, you've done kind of all of it. Now you're manufacturing. Yes, I guess the, my favorite would be um, that there's always new people coming into it, uh, and they have a lot to uh, a lot to offer. You have uh, new ideas, um, new keepers. It's a, a fresh start for the most part. Um, and I like talking to people. I talk to a lot of people at the shows. And <laughs> well, I, actually, I think it's a I think it's an interesting perspective because a lot of people. You say you like talking to new people. A lot of people yeah. say, no, I only like talking with professionals. I don't like dealing with the new people. Yeah, that's true. So that's kind of interesting. You got to talk to both. Yeah. Balance it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, older people stuck in their ways, you know, still incubating over fish tanks with <laughs> fish tank heaters in it. And, you know, they bash the sim container. <laughs> Not me, not anymore. I'm a believer. <laughs> no, the kidding. sim container is awesome. All right, so what's your least favorite part? Probably parts of the social media aspect, such social as like... Social media, again, another yeah. vote for social media. Well, the, here's the thing. Reptile people are on Facebook and they're posting their stuff on Facebook. A lot of the information tends to get lost, like as the day goes by and new, new stuff goes... New threads get added to the Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of this important information is buried and then, you know, the next... Day you get the but same. It's not question. like the old forums or whatever. Right, the forums you could go back, and you know it's a little bit easier. I, I just feel like a lot of these groups are too big. You don't get the help you need. There's also a lot of like quick flip stuff going on. You know, like people, they get something they really want, and then they realize, you know, this water monitor, you know, or this uh, this tegu is stinking up my house, and next thing you know, it's back up for sale. 
and then the person will go get something else. And they have a spitting cobra. And then they get a spitting cobra. Good first thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a random icebreaker question for you. So oh, okay. On the spot. You ready? I'm ready. It doesn't have to be rep reptile related. Well, yeah, this one is. Okay, I got a good reptile related icebreaker question for you. Okay. What's the stupidest thing you've ever done with reptiles? Most embarrassing, bear it all. Right um, I, I only ask you this because I have so much respect for you that okay. I'm trying to make you seem more like the rest of us mortals. Stupidest thing I did, I bought um, I bought 15 ball pythons. <laughs> you take it, Ben. I did. It's a, it's a true story. I bought 15 ball pythons. Uh, they they all refused their first meal, and I got frustrated, and I said, "Please come <laughs> take these things back." <laughs> Are you are you serious? The stupidest thing you've ever done, you're telling me, is buy a ball python. That's the stupidest That's thing you've done. Maybe. Man, I, I can think of numerous times I've done things that like ended in reptiles' deaths. You got frustrated because you bought one that you didn't like. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What did I do? I was trying to make you more mortal. Now now it just seems oh, like I, that's the dumbest thing you did was exactly I, what everyone else in reptiles does every day. Again. The entire industry based around doing what you did that was the stupidest thing you did. I, I had... <laughs> <laughs> just, I just hatched Ackies for the first time, was like maybe, maybe ten years ago, and I, okay. like, I put in a water container, like a little water bowl, but it was too deep for them, and they all went in and never came out. Yeah, that's a bad. I've one. done a lot of stupid things, like sliding glass cages. I had uh, thrown baby Tristus monitors in a sliding glass cage, and they all slipped you through, got the, through the little cracks. Yeah, yeah they all slipped uh, through the through the glass. That's doors. the bane of the sliding glass. So then sure. I had like glue traps all around my basement. I caught every single one of them. Glue, on the glue traps. traps? Yeah, put down glue traps like for mice. Yeah, the and kind they that they get stuck on and they die. No, they get oil. stuck and they come off. If How'd you run you them underwater, the or maybe a little cooking oil on it. Really? Yeah, don't cook them. Just run them underwater. Oh, I remember off. trying to save mice from those and like peeling their scalps off. That's yeah, that's not good. Oops. You that's just run them underwater. What else is that? Oh, I, I have <laughs> well, tons another of stupid thing that I. Do. All right, well that's pretty good. Yeah. We'll go back to this question. Oh, I, oh, I, <laughs> we'll circle around. Yeah, we'll, no, we'll circle that's, back to this. That's it. That's the interview. So if people want to get a hold of you and pick up one of your revolutionary sim containers, which, like in all seriousness, guys, I am absolutely loving the sim containers. I'm yeah. I'm you bringing. Want to see? Hold on. I show uh, you a picture. I'm bringing a stack of them home. So this is the XL. This just turned into a commercial. The XL. Full disclosure, I'm not sponsored, even though he keeps giving them to me for free. <laughs> I did. I, did. <laughs> I have a few of them. This one is actually going to Garrett. So. Very easy to set up. Um, for monitors, I do about a half inch of water on the bottom. I don't know if you can see, these are actually set up on this little shelf, so they're suspended above. The... Right. These are the grids. They lay on top. With the sim come these nifty things. These are the rails. So these rails are really cool because they're contoured and they pop in and if you have small legs you can make narrow rows or if you have wider eggs you make wider rows and they pop out you know you can adjust them if you have eggs that are clumped together you can take all the rails out and just put the eggs right on top of the grid oh clutch you guys remember andrew acevedo he says he doesn't have to play tetris because he has a bunch of sim containers down in the basement he just you, you friends with that guy no, no. I just had to interview him one I like time Andrew. for work. Hi, Andrew. Professional, professional relationship. <laughs> so, let's <see. laughs> Right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, then the sim also has the lid. And if you want, you can vent the lid. You can drill holes in it. Um, some people don't like to add holes to their egg containers. I they did. I, I took a soldering it. iron. I just put it, like, a hole on either end is what I did. Oh, you do the sides? Soldering iron on the side. Boom, boom. Oh, okay. I do the lid. Uh, I usually, for the XL, I do like six big holes. Like, yeah. not big, but maybe maybe the diameter of a pencil. So that's the Sim XL. You can find these at simcontainer.com. You can look us up on Instagram. Look up the name Sim Container. It's all one word. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, Sim Container by Schoolmata Concepts. Um, and that's it. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you. Well, hey, thank you very much for coming on. Actually, I, I drive out here to make him be on the show there. But there it is, the sim container and the man behind it. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, you oh, what is John anyway? He kind of looks like one of those Italians. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is. We're, we're gonna use, this is the cold. That's the good stuff right there. This goes at, <laughs> this goes at the end. You gotta watch after the credits. <laughs>
He's like, I heard he's like four foot three. Well, now they know for sure. Look, this is the actual angle, right? This is all a camera trick, like this on Lord of the Rings, trick. where they have the Hobbit next to the. Right. Yeah, this is how. This is how you make him look equal. Yes, thank you. I'm on a booster seat. <laughs> I'm sitting on a sim container. <laughs>